Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. Today on the show, we've got Scotty Pippen talking about, well, Scotty Pippen, the return of an iconic Air Jordan, this week's hottest releases, and of course, our Hard Pass. All right, let's start off with some hot takes. The NBA announced some changes to their season's end awards. The MVP trophy is now named after Michael Jordan. The Defensive Player of the Year now bears Hakeem Olajuwon's name. Will Chamberlain will be tied to the Rookie of the Year award and more. They even introduced a new award for the best clutch player, which not surprisingly was named after Mr. Clutch himself, Jerry West. Personally, I would have gone with ISO Joe Johnson as a troll since Mr. West is already the NBA logo, albeit unofficially, but man, I would have loved to see Shaquille O'Neal's reaction when he found out he didn't get an award named after him somewhere. Charles Barkley is getting his jokes ready for this. I'm guessing this isn't the end of the league honoring its legends by naming awards after them, so here are a few suggestions. The slam dunk contest winner should be rechristened the Dominique I won in 1988, damn it, Wilkins Award with an honorable mention to Vince Carter. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson can share the three-point shootout trophy when they're both retired. Pat Bev can get cut by the Lakers, and Shaq probably gets something out of pity like the highest field goal percentage award or something. Again, Chuck has to be loving this. As we're recording this, the show launch of the concepts Orange Lobster Dunks is still a show. <sighs> Sorry, everybody. Carmelo Anthony's kid played against LeBron James's kid in a high school game that was televised on ESPN2. It was so hyped that they even had Lala Anthony, Kim Kardashian, Natalia Bryant, Vince Carter, and Scottie Pippen, more on him later, in attendance. Huh, they got a Gucci row too, huh? Sierra Canyon might be the new Drew League, and honestly, I don't know how I feel about that. Customizer Chef Huel shows off what everybody thought when they first saw the Zion Williamson Air Jordan 1 voodoo, but also shout out to the champ in the comments who claims through his sources that these started as another Travis Scott Jordan collab, but switched over to Zion after last year's Astroworld tragedy. Wow. There's a lot of my uncle works at Nintendo energy and he said that Master Chief is going to be in Smash energy in that thread. We all thought there might be a Travis connection too, bro. It's not an original sneaker conspiracy theory, but... After Zion is pictured showing them off, maybe it's time we lay off the midsole glue in the comment section too. After last week's show, when we discussed the dissolution of the Nike and Kyrie Irving partnership, Kyrie has worn blacked out pairs of his, well, I guess we're gonna call them now former signature shoes. And it has also come to our attention that Devlin Carter, founder of Sia Collective, and someone we also featured in last week's episode, has reached out to Kai for a possible partnership. Hey, if Kai isn't going to start his own brand, teaming up with a black owned brand and someone who knows how to skirt trademarks would be interesting. I mean, they can make their own from scratch designs and also troll Nike with Nike Kyries that aren't Nike Kyrie enough to get sued. If Kai really wants to be a disruptor in the sneaker space, this would be an interesting first step. The next would be being part of a championship caliber team that doesn't fall apart at the slightest friction, but you know, we'll get what we can. I guess there was a rapper named Lil Gnar, Lil Gnar, 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 I don't know, who was also being sued by Nike for selling knockoff dunks. I mean, I haven't seen these dunks. What do they look? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Lil Gnar, you're better than that, I, I think. Well, at least you settled and hope that you'll be able to collab with Nike in the future. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. Um, and now that I have laughed at this, it's totally gonna happen now. Watch, watch, it's gonna happen. All right, breaking news. I missed out on the Nike Crypto Kicks IRL drill. No, no, I didn't do it because I believe in any of this crap, but rather as a public service. So kids can one day say, Jock did that. So hopefully you won't have to go through that. All right, let's move on to our middle segment. Scotty Pippen was a guest on Full Size Run and he dropped a few gems for the crew that I think we should probably discuss because, man, I kind of want to live in the alternate reality where Scotty got more sneaker respect. But if he did get the respect and maybe more importantly, the money that he deserved, he probably wouldn't feel the need to be out there as he is now. But then again, we probably wouldn't get to talk about things like Rasheed Wallace being a GOAT power forward candidate. I mean, she's good, no doubt about it. I don't think Scotty is saying Wallace's accomplishments put him on par with a Tim Duncan or a Kevin Garnett, but the talent was undeniable. Hell, co-writer believes that Sheed is in the same space as Tracy McGrady and that they might be the most naturally gifted players in their respective positions, but they just lack the intangibles, including luck, that peers like Duncan and the late Kobe Bryant had. Okay, let's start with Scotty wanting to claim the Nike Air more of tempo as a de facto signature shoe since he's the player that it's most associated with. I mean, he's not wrong, 
Sure, there were other NBA players that wore those particular up-tempos, but when you see the Chicago Bulls and Scotty on TV several times a month, it's kind of hard to associate them with anybody but Scotty. And then there was the blue and white colorway for the 1996 Olympics. Yeah. Uptempos were basically the proto Air Pippins. Only person that could have even come close to claiming them wasn't even an NBA player. It was Brendan Fraser playing a Tarzan adjacent guy who couldn't stay away from trees. If Nike ever decided to show Scotty more love, they should release a new version of the Uptempos, but with PIP on one side and PEN on the other. Then there was the long standing sneaker urban legend that the Nike Air foam posit was originally destined for Scotty. As Pippen recalls on the show, the phones were supposed to be the next non-signature shoe that he was going to wear like the Uptempos, but then Penny Hardaway swooped in and took it from Scotty. Now, that doesn't line up with the most famous version of the story, which includes designer Eric Avar showing off Air Penny 3 concepts, an unimpressed Hardaway, and a bag that he wasn't meant to see. Then there were the reports that Scotty didn't actually like the foams, and that's why they eventually went to Penny. Man, I kind of want to hear what Penny has to say about this whole business. But still, it's fun to think about how different Scotty and Penny's sneaker legacies would be if the foams had the Pippin logo instead of the one cent. If everything had bent to Scotty's favor, he would have in his signature shoe line the Nike Air Uptempo 95s, 96s, the more Uptempos, and the foam posits. And then the Air Pippin 1 would be like the Pippin 5, and the Iconic Pippin 2s would be the Pippin 7s. Like, that's a murderer's row of shoes, man. I'm not saying it's better than Air Jordan 1 through 7, but it would be a lot closer than you think. Damn. No wonder he's so bitter. You fight the good fight, Scotty, and claim what's yours, good sir. Oh, and there was also a whole section on NFTs during the show. Yeah, I don't want to live that alternate reality. Anyways, it's the Heat Check, where we bring you everything that's dropping this week. First, we have the Stussy Nike Air Penny 2 Black and Vivid Green on the 20th for 200 each. The Air Jordan 7 Quad 54 on the 20th as well for 225. The Nike Dunk Low Mars Stone on the 20th for 120. The Air Jordan 1 Gorged Green on the 20th for 180. The A Cold Wall Converse Geo Forma Boot White and Volt, the craziest sneaker I've seen in a long time. Those are on the 20th for 150 each. The Women's Air Jordan 1 Medium Gray on the 22nd for 180. The Salehi Bimberry New Balance 990 V2. Sand be the time on the 22nd for 200. The Air Jordan 13 Black and University Blue on the 23rd for 200. The Adidas Trey Young 2 Super Villain on the 23rd for $140. And then our pick of the week is the Off White and Nike Terraforma Wheat, and then the Summit White colorway. These are on the 21st for 210 each. We dedicated an entire section of last week's show to this new hiking boot designed by the late Virgil Abloh. So now we get to see what the reaction will be for these. I have no doubt that these will sell out. But will they sell out because resellers think they can make a quick buck? Or is there now a retroactive appreciation for Virgil's work now that he's no longer with us? And now for a heat check on my five-time world champion, San Francisco Fort. Nope, nope. We're not doing this, co-rider. We're not jinxing anything, okay? We just have to hang on long enough to get Jimmy G back on the field or on the bench if our favorite player, Brock Birdie, continues to catch fire. Let's just move on to the other thing you had in mind for this segment. Thank you. All right. Let's do a heat check on the return of the Air Jordan 23. And all I have to say is finally, man, finally. With official images revealing that the Air Jordan 23 will be part of Nike and Jordan Brand's slate of Chinese New Year's sneakers, that now makes two pairs that Co-Rider absolutely needs to have. The 23s and the Year of the Rabbit Nike Dunks. If you're wondering, I have no problem blowing up Co-Rider's spot and hyping up sneakers that he likes. Guy starts an Instagram account, at the underscore co underscore writer, and he acts like he owns the place. But yes, I love that the 23 is coming back, and hopefully this is just the start since we are a few days away from 2023. I know people will probably joke that it's not really an accomplishment since there haven't been a lot of, quote, classic Air Jordans since the 90s, but the Jordan 23 was and still is the best Jordan made in this millennium. All right, it's time for this week's Hard Pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go, like Tony Khan. No, it's not because of the missteps he made, both intentional and out of his control. In 2022, that turned AEW from a real competitor in the pro wrestling land into a slightly better version of end of days WCW. Nah, it's because he secured the rights to Round Ball Rock, AKA the NBA on NBC theme song. Shout out to John and Dave Tesh. Look, Tony. You love that song. I love that song. 
every annoying 90s basketball fan on Twitter who won't shut up about the good old days of Knicks Heat games with 73-65 box scores loves that song. We don't need it to hype up the best of seven series between the elite and death triangle that we all know is going to make it to seven matches and we definitely don't need it to watch a washed up Chris Jericho that loses the jobbers. I do appreciate getting the song right when you have someone with MJ in their initials as your top champion, but that's about it. Get the real theme song that needs to come back in our wrestling lives. Okay. Oh, and push powerhouse Hobbs, damn it. Anyways, this week's hard pass actually goes to the Spider-Verse. No, we are not doing this, Co-Rider. I know you have this weird agenda against the Spider-Verse Jordan 1s because it's not actually representative of the movie's aesthetic and that it's really just a lazy reskin pair of Jordan 1s. I know you don't understand the reference to the Kirby dots on the shoes when Jack Kirby wasn't important to the creation of Spider-Man, which was a Stan Lee and Steve Ditko joint. All I'm saying is that I hear you and I just need you to know, no one gives a shit, man. The Spider-Verse Ones was one of the most popular sneakers of 2018. Yes, it was just another pair of Chicago Ones and in a year when we got another pair of Chicago Ones with the lost and found, I think we are about to reach the tipping point as to how many Chicago Ones the culture can really tolerate out there in the market. But here's the thing. That is a you problem, co-writer. This is not a hard pass problem. It's like you have a list of grievances that you've been waiting to get off your chest that you're going to save for our year-end show next week. Now, how's that for a tease? Okay, let's try this again. Anyways, this week's actual, actual, actual hard pass goes to Nike messing around and not giving us what we want. And that's a retro of the Nike Zoom KD4. When news broke that Nike was bringing back the Nike KD3 All-Star in 2023, it was a little bit of a surprise. While LeBron James has been building up his back catalog this past several years and Kobe Prochos have become the Hooper's choice, Kevin Durant has been quiet on the retro front. I mean, Kevin Durant has had maybe the quietest 15 deep signature shoe run we've ever seen. Like, can you describe the KD1 to me? How about the KD2s, except for maybe the creamsicles? Can you put the KD's Durant War during the Warriors era in order for me? There's a good chance a lot of you can't. Whether that's Nike's fault because they didn't make memorable sneakers or Durant didn't have big enough moments you need to make a shoe stand out, well, that's up for discussion. However, there's also a very specific era in Durant's sneaker history that the world has been clamoring for and I think it's time they exploit it. I'm talking, of course, about the Nike KD4. Between the successful collabs with Nerf to imaginative colorways like the Weatherman, the KD4 was hot out the gate. Priced at $88, it was also a great entry-level sneaker that endeared KD to the young fans and their parents. Missed out on the Weathermans? OKC colorways and others were actually available and attainable, unlike the expensive by comparison, the Braun 9 and Kobe 7. It all came together during the 2012 NBA All-Star Weekend and Nike Basketball's epic run of Galaxy-themed sneakers. While the Galaxy phone posits and the LeBron 9 Big Bang were grabbing all the headlines, the KD4 All-Star was in many ways the big winner that weekend and showed that Durant is deserving of more than just a short-lived signature shoe line that ends after six entries. I mean, who does that? You can't just end after six, man. That should be the start of a signature shoe's prime years, not the end. Thankfully, KD falls into the former category because after the KD4, we got the very underrated KD5 that maybe didn't quite live up to the highs of the four, while the KD6 is arguably the second most beloved shoe in the Durant signature line. If you follow any number of NBA-related accounts on social media, it's almost guaranteed that you're going to see a throwback post of the 2012 Miami Heat. Yeah, it's cool that LeBron is still doing LeBron things in 2022, thanks for getting us number 17, by the way, but man, Miami Braun was different. I appreciated it then, but it seems like a lot of people have mellowed out and started to see just how good he was at that time. At the same time, we don't seem to be doing the same to the leader of the team that Miami faced in the 2012 Finals, Russell Westbrook, I, I mean Kevin Durant. And that's a shame, really. We've let our collective obsession with his social media quirks and choices of who he plays with kind of ruin the fun we should be having watching him be an all-time great. And that weird beef seems to have also passed down to his sneakers. I'm not saying it's too late for Nike to reverse course and bring back the KD4s, but there might come a time when even nostalgia can't save them. Bring back the KD4s in all the colorways we like and price them at $88 like it's 2012. Kevin Durant might not consider himself an $88 player as he once famously said, but it might just be the push he needs to get the kids to appreciate him again. All right, 
That's going to do it for the show. Thank you guys for watching Hard Pass. I am Jacques Slade. I'll see you next week, but not before we leave you with a viewer Hard Pass. You're sleeping on the Metallic Sixes, bro. He, Nike shouldn't have sandwiched them between the Lost and Founds and the Cherry Elevens, but them things is hard. Metallic Sixes, forget the Cherry Elevens, forget the Lost and Founds. If you didn't get the Cherry, if you didn't get the Metallic Sixes, you lost. If you'd like to possibly be featured in a future episode, call us at 818-493-9325. Leave a short message, your social media if you want, no more than 30 seconds, and I'll see you next week. Peace.